Hi, welcome to Kid Blog. My name is Molly Miller and I'm going to be your guide for today's tutorial. Let's get started. So you're asking yourself, why blogging? Well, the first reason is the Common Core State Standards. As many of you may already know, writing is included in the framework. This is a change from the Illinois State Standards. While writing was included as part of the Illinois State Standards, writing was not a part of the assessment framework. With the Common Core, writing is a large portion of the framework that school districts will be held accountable for. Blogging can help build writing into lessons using tools that motivate and engage students. Another reason for blogging is building 21st century skills. According to the assessment and teaching of 21st century skills, learning to collaborate with others and connect through technology are essential in a knowledge-based economy. 21st century skills can be placed into broad, four broad categories. Ways of thinking, ways of working, tools for working, and skills living in the world. Blogging creates an opportunity for students to learn and practice in the four 21st century skill categories. So now you might be asking yourself, well blogging is neat, but now what? What do kids do with the blog? They need blogging with a purpose. First of all, they need an audience. Blogging can create an instant audience for students. Students also need to know expectations for blogging. A simple rubric can provide students with blogging expectations. Rubric templates will be made available during the face-to-face -face session for you to develop for your students. Now you may be asking, why kid blog? Well, the first reason is teacher control. Teachers have administrative control over all student blogs and accounts. Teachers must approve a student post before it is visible on the blog to the entire class. Teachers can also reset usernames and passwords. Teachers can create guest accounts to allow parents or community members access to the blog. Student blogs are private by default and parents can access their own student's blog with a password. KidBlog is compliant with the Child's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPA. COPA provides protection for all children 13 and under from any personal information being released via the internet without parental consent. Another reason is it's a web-based and iPad app. Teachers and students can access their account via the internet or the app. KidBlog, KidBlog is accessible anywhere the internet is available. And lastly, and most importantly, it's free. Kids Blog is a free website that provides a secure platform for teachers and students to collaborate. So now we know why Kid Blog and why blogging, let's go to www.kidblog.org and take a short tutorial. Go to your start menu and open up Internet Explorer. Click on Create a Class. You can either choose to create your own display name and password or sign in with Google if you have a Gmail account. Once you've created your account, you'll be directed to the class blog. Click on Control Panel in the upper right hand corner. The Control Panel is used to manage your blog. In the menu bar in the upper portion of the screen, you will see the Dashboard, New Posts, Review Posts, Users, and Settings. In the middle of the dashboard, there's a place to look at blogging activity, recent comments, and recent posts. Click on Settings in the menu bar of the control panel. Click on View Other Themes, choose a blog theme, and click Activate. There are a couple different ways of adding users. Add new users, add existing users, and bulk create users. I'm going to walk you through how to add a new user feature. To, first, you need to create a display name for the student. I would suggest creating a username for each student the same way, such as first and last name. Then create a password for the student. Keep the password format similar for all students, such as student ID. Students can access the class blog through the web address found in the settings on the control panel.
Students enter the web address and it will take them directly to the class blog. Students will then log in by clicking log in in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Students can also access the class blog by going to the Kid Blog website, clicking and entering the secret code that is found in the settings on the dashboard. Students will then come to a screen where they can create their own login and password. Only use this feature if you don't want to upload the users yourself. Make sure to log into the class blog. Go to the control panel in the dashboard. Look under the blogging activity, then click on pending. You can approve blogs individually by clicking on each blog or approve the entire list. To log out, simply click log out in the upper right hand corner. Now that you have registered and have created your own username and password, there are a couple ways to access your class blog. At the Kid Blog website, click on the arrow next to the login in the upper right hand corner of the screen. You can either type in your email, username, or class URL. This will take you to a screen that lists the class blogs you have access to or created. Click on the blog link and remember to log in after you clicked on the blog link. Click on Login in the upper right hand side of the screen. If you remember the class blog name, enter it in the first blank. If not, click on Forgot Your Class URL. Enter the teacher email or username. Click on Class Blog Name, find your username, and type in your password. The iPad app has all of the same features as the website. You can create a new post, you can view posts, you can view comments, you can view the blog on site, you can look at your control panel and manage your blog, and you also can log out. Now that you've learned how to create your own class blog on KidBlog, you can now start having your students blog. Here are some different activities your students could do. Descriptive writing. Post a picture and have the kids write descriptive paragraphs about the picture. Book chats. If you're reading a novel in the class, have chats about your book. Field trips. Virtual and real field trips. Have the kids blog. Current events. Take a current event that's mildly controversial and ask the students how they feel about it, or explain math problems. Here are some websites that will give you some more ideas on how to incorporate blogging into your class.